Hi guys, Mr. Ben here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, the concept of motion in 2D. Uh, but first of all, before we get to that, we're going to be looking at the 1D collisions. Um, and I just want to, obviously our old tutorial book, when I look at some of the exemplars from here for you. Um, so this case here, we've got a, a freight train a cart that's moving on a track and coupled with another one, uh, which is stationary, what will actually happen to the two carts momentum when the when the brakes are off right so this is a sort of typical sort of question that you might get um, the other one you might have seen is something like a high power rifle is massive of five kilograms fires a 15 gram bullet with a muzzle velocity of that calculate the recoil okay so that's a 1d because the the motions are in only one direction okay it's either back or forth um, so obviously we'll be working our way up to looking at 2D where we've got things moving at angles and colliding and, and so on. And here's another example is a small cart mass of that moving on a track. So it's moving at a certain speed and then what you do is you double the mass in there. So what will actually happen to the, the cart itself? Now we're not going to do all of these questions but we'll just go through the, the basic idea of that uh, for you with one example. So let's do, just do the first one. So what we've got is a cart. Uh, whoa. We've got a cart coming through. Uh, it's hitting uh, a tra a, another cart, which, which has got the same, pretty well, the same mass, uh, but neg negligible friction. And so the other one, cart B, is actually not moving. So the key concept behind anything to do with momentum, we use conservation of momentum, which is a really important uh, value. Um, so conservation of momentum says that the momentum initial is equal to the momentum afterwards. Um, and obviously momentum is a vector quantity. All right? So vector quantity, so we have to take into account all of that information. Um, now one of the key things here I suppose when we start looking at uh, this question here is that the we don't really have to worry about, well, we still have to worry about the direction, but it's not as important because it's just in one direction. All right, so let's draw, let's draw a picture of this. So we've got our cart B sitting over here. All right, and it's got a velocity of zero. All right, and then we've got cart A, depending on how we, all right, so cart A over here is moving in that direction there <coughs> and it's got a velocity of two meters per second and it's got a mass of um, 2.5 by 10 to the 4 kilograms this one over here has got a mass of um, 5 by 10 to the 4 kilograms so it's twice as heavy as that one over there all right so the key thing with any of these calculations, and the same when we start looking at 2D, is to work out the initial velocity. The initial velocity is going to be, I mean, initial momentum is going to be momentum of, of A plus the momentum of B. All right, so, um, and then what we're doing over here is we know that momentum is mass times by velocity. So momentum of A is 2.5 by 10 to the 4 and then by two seconds, two minutes per second, and momentum B is gonna be five by 10 to the four, and times by zero, so therefore that has no momentum because it's got no velocity. So it's gotta be moving to have momentum. So the initial momentum is simply gonna be momentum of A, so that's gonna be uh, five by 10 to the four sec newtons, and that's to the right. Right, so we basically need a direction associated with it. The way I've drawn it, it's moving to the right. We know that the final momentum is going to be equal to the initial momentum. That's due to conservation of momentum. So you need to state that, that you understand what you're using. So then what we can say is our final momentum is going to be uh, equal to the momentum of A plus the 
plus b because they're going to be coupled together now so all we're really to try and find is what is going to be their final velocity yeah? so that's the sort of question that you might get um, so if we're looking at over here we know the two masses are going to be added together so that's going to be 7.5 by 10 to the 4 and we don't know the final velocity but we know the answer over here is going to be 5 by 10 to the 4 7.5 so that speed's going to be uh, 0.66 okay all right so if we come back to over here so our velocity is going to be uh, 0 0.66 meters per second to the right my pen's died oh she's working now so that's equal to 0 0.66 um, meters per second to the right so we're assuming obviously that makes sense that if we're adding extra mass onto it then that would slow the um, the carts down so talking about a, uh, a concept of uh, change in momentum we're looking at obviously the two things, um, the two things looking at the initial momentum, the final momentum. So the second question, so we've done the initial momentum, we've done the speed of the two carts. And the other thing that comes in here is looking at the total kinetic energy before and after the impact. All right. So seeing if this collision is actually elastic. So if the kinetic energy before and afterwards um, is the same then it's elastic collision so kinetic energy before is simply just going to be that of a all right so that's going to be half mv squared so that's what you're doing putting your mass uh, 2.5 by 10 to the 4 times for the velocity so it's 2 squared and then the kinetic energy afterwards is simply going to be a half of the mass which is um, 7.5 by, by 10 to the 4 and then times by the velocity which is 2 thirds squared and if those two answers are equal then it's elastic if they're not the same then it's not elastic uh, my dog's barking so I better shut this video up now